to the circumscribed living flesh known as, and then the names of the three, in accordance with Article 112 of the most sacred deed and covenant, Pactum de Singularis Calum, and in accordance with the most sacred rule of law, divine law, natural law and cognitive law, and positive law, known as Astrum Juris Divini Canonum, have by this recorded sacred event in Eucadia time, and then the date again, 12th of June, delivered by this our present deed to our member, trust recipient number, and then his number, also known by the Joseph uh, Aloysius Ratzinger, also known as His Holiness Vicar of Christ, also known as Benedict the Sixteenth. We command you for the first time. Remember, there are four four tribunals, so it goes first, second, third, and fourth. Upon notice of this sacred writ and deed, and your live born record annexed hereto in full, that you attest and acknowledge your flesh, mind, and soul have risen from the dead, and that you have returned. You are no longer lost nor abandoned and are completely competent. Therefore, by such acknowledgement, any and all Sester KV trusts, also known as Fides Commissari and Foreign Citus Trusts, created at the time of your birth or still existing, are no longer valid and must be terminated. And, furthermore, As you have risen from the dead by the lawful collapse of any trust based on such assumptions no longer being valid, you attest and acknowledge that you are no longer a servant of servants in the manner of slaves, nor bound by any laws claiming valid or lawful slavery. And finally, as you are lawfully emancipated without restraint, that as a member of one heaven, you pledge to ensure that the continuation of such presumptions, systems, trusts, liens, instruments, bonds, claims are terminated for all other members and that the credit of the treasury of one heaven is acknowledged as the ultimate source of underwriting and no longer the monetization of sin. And then the three witnesses. So Benedict is free. He is free. He is no longer the servant of servants. Pontifex Romanus, the Roman Pontifex Pontifex office and trust is collapsed and he is now obliged as a member to free you all and validate what all of you have been trying to do and have been obstructed by these officials who, through their obstruction, through their stupidity and their arrogance, have disavowed the system. So the issue now is, will Benedict honour the prophecy? Will he honour everything he stands for Or will he disavow through arrogance and ignorance? This is free will. This is unknown. But what history and you as witness to history, I hope will stand and testify, is that on this night concerning the day of Pentecost, The end was wrought. And when we refer to Judgment Day at the end of the year, this is a summary judgment. They now have six months to correct the mistakes, to collapse the trust. We are not slaves. We were not permitted to be slaves. They have no right to make us slaves. We did not agree to being slaves. They cannot play any more games. So we will see what happens at the end of the year. But the day of judgment, the end of days, is the true end of their system.
Now let's move on to point two, and I'm mindful of the time, and I hope if it's okay with you all, I get through these other points and then we can move into the questions. And I'm going to try and be able to answer people who want to speak on the phone lines, but it's going to be a bit of a technical challenge for me, and I apologise if I can't physically do it. But I do want to segue now to the Illuminati and the New World Order based on what I'm saying, because this is part of the, the infrastructure. There are many things that people question when they come to one heaven, and that's fair enough. What is it? What's behind it? One of the things that people say, and it's fair enough, is that this appears and sounds like you're trying to manufacture the end of the world. That somehow you're playing into that system. Well, let's start by going through some of the facts of the Illuminati and the New World Order. They call themselves the New World Order. Not the Old World Order, the New World Order. And the term didn't appear until after World War II. Well, let's look at some clues about the Illuminati so that we stop going round in circles. You'll hear people saying, you know, the New World Order is trying to get themselves into positions of control or they're trying to uh, manufacture the end of the world. They've done it. They've already, they've already tried twice to end the world. Twice they've gone through it. And they're in place now. So they're trying to do it. They've done it. They tried it once in World War I and they tried it again in World War II. But what am I talking about? Well, there's a series of prophecies, a key series of prophecies. One of them is the mystery of the number 1,260, 1,260 days or years being the period of the tribulation. And why is it important? It's important because it is part of the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel and it is mentioned no less than seven times in two of the most important books of prophecy of the Bible. In the book of Daniel, twice, and in the book of Revelation, through different means, five times. Seven times is the tribulation emphasized as a fundamental principle of validation of the end of days. Now, if you take it literally, the tribulation is three and a half years. But if you take it as the analogy is designed, it is 1,260 days, or more particularly 1,260 years. Funnily enough, the year that the Catholic Church was created in truth through the Pippins, through the Franks, when they were having their war against the Byzantine Christian Church is 751. That is the year that the first Catholic Pope ever sat on a chair in Rome. Any claim prior to that is an absolute forgery. At 1260 years to 751 and that tells you the year of the end of the tribulation in truth. Now anyone that thinks the tribulation is three and a half years is taking the simplistic view of what's written. By the way, <clears throat> if uh, you count June the 12th from the beginning of the process of one heaven, we are in fact dealing with three and a half years. June the 12th is exactly three and a half years from the beginning of this process. So whether they take it literally or through revelation, whatever way they slice it, it matches. Well, what's another key part of the prophecy and philosophy of their system? It is that they must not, they cannot return to what they consider the is the promised land until the end of days. They cannot. And if they did, that is absolutely disavowing any covenant, they claim. Absolutely disavowing. In other words, if you see 
any group that consider themselves the true heirs of the Israelites returning to the Palestine and the tribulation and the end of days, the end of world, Armageddon, Revelation, Judgment Day has not already happened, then they are heretics. So either the world has already ended, the day of judgment has already happened, and the elite of the world have accepted this, or we are dealing with the largest concentration of heretics and the largest proof that these people believe in nothing. It's one or the other. can't be both. Because that prophecy was clear. Absolutely clear. Now what is another prophecy? It is a prophecy that during the tribulation, a number, this comes from the Talmud, a number of the uh, people will be um, lost. They will be sacrificed through some great tribulation. And the number is six. Now the rabbi in World War I considered it to be six million. And in fact, at the end of World War I, the rabbi claimed that after the three and a half year tribulation of World War I, three and a half years, there you go, three and a half years, that six million Jews had died in the conflict. And it was front page. You can go and see it. It's public available, front page news. They can't hide that. The problem was it wasn't believed. The problem was it wasn't believed. So they couldn't perfect that element. But one thing we know for certain, and it is absolute fact, Millions of people were murdered, burnt alive. Millions were burnt alive in an extraordinary and awful and evil system of sacrifice in World War II. They didn't burn bodies in those death camps. They burnt people alive. And when they finished this, we were told absolutely and if you didn't believe it, they would put you in prison. Six million were sacrificed. And they even gave us the word holocaust so that we understood exactly what it was. What is a holocaust? It is a burnt offering to Moloch, to Satan. That's what holocaust means. It's always meant that. Always meant that. So the New World Order was born out of the manufactured end of the world by the Illuminati, by the ruling elite. They manufactured it. The problem is, when they did it, there was nothing to come after it. The New Age movement had not produced any kind of manifesto. The theosophy, Madame Blavatsky, had been a terrible disaster. And the only group that seemed to have any kind of thing to say was a group that believes we're all animals without a soul anyway, and that's psychology. The only group that has not disappointed the New World Order coming out of its, out of its uh, breaking the, the back of its history is the psychiatry psychology movement. But for everyone else, it has been a bit of disappointment. So when people tell you that the New World Order, that the Illuminati are planning to destroy the world, they've already done that. They have already done that. Tried it twice, gone out of their way to do it once, and has been an abysmal failure. Why? Because they did not meet the criteria. It was artificially manufactured, and the truth is they have exposed themselves as the very worst heretics. A heretic cannot claim to represent the covenant. They have no right to claim that they still hold any kind of sacred covenant. The emperor has no clothes. Now what about the Illuminati? And we're running out of time here and I really want to get through this. What about the Illuminati? There's three things that they do well. Fraud, force and... 